What we're going to do here is we're going to create a function that models a piece of data. Now let's look at this one question from the textbook. It says, below is a table which shows the mean monthly maximum temperatures for a city in Greece. Um, so we've got running from January to December and we have the temperatures in degrees Celsius. And what they want us to do is model the temperature using this function. So they want us to create, basically we're creating a formula that helps us predict temperatures in the future. Uh, find good estimates, estimates of the constants A, B, C, and D for this. So here's our sine function we're going to use. A, some number times sine, B, and they're using the letter T instead of X, but T represents the time here, as in time in, you know, in, in months, okay? Um, take away something plus D. And you can assume that January is 1st and February is 2nd and so on and so forth. Um, and we're going we're gonna to do it on GeoGebra, actually. We're going to... We're going to use the spreadsheet feature and then model a function accurately. Now, what I'm going to do here is on this spreadsheet feature, um, if you want to get to the, there's a file at the bottom, actually. There's a file at the bottom of this page. Just download it. Um, we're going to enter the data in here. So first of all, we're going to enter in the months. Now, I'm just going to pause it and do it all now, and then um, I'll show you what I've done. So let me just pause it and do it over do it. Okay, so I've entered in all the data. Here's the months, January to December, and here's the temperatures. And what we're going to do is plot those points, like a scatter graph, onto our grid here. So we go to Create List of Points. Oh, no, hang on. We need to select them first of all. Select the points. And go to Create List of Points and press Create. Okay, you can't see anything, but they are there. And what it is is just we need to change our scales because... If we go to January, one across, we're going up to 15, so we just need to see where these points are. So if you click this button and then hover over the y-axis and these arrows will appear, and if you just scale it down quickly, you can see the points here. Now what we're going to do is try and create a function that models this pretty accurately. Uh, it won't be perfect, um, but it'll be, it'll be reasonable, really. So let's, let's try and do that. So let's break it up into steps, first of all. So... First thing we're going to do is in our function here. Okay, actually, let me copy out the function first. T approximately equals. I should really use approximately equals a sine b t take away something plus d, and the letter t is basically our x. Um, right now, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to work out the amplitude. And what, what I like to call the displacement, but the, yeah, the principal axis first, okay? So we're going to work out A and D first of all. Now what we need to do is this, to work out the amplitude and uh, the value D, if we go back to our data here, let me move this a little bit to the right, okay. The amplitude and the, the, the value D, it all depends on basically the size of these waves, really. And what we need to do is try and find the highest and lowest point in terms of our y-axis. So what we need to do is try and find the y-max and the y-min. Okay, the y-min. And if we go through our data, it's better to use this than the graph, really, because it's easier to see. The maximum temperature we have is 27, so our maximum is 27. And the minimum, what's the minimum? The minimum is 14, so the, the lowest the temperature is 14. Now, to work out the amplitude and the displacement, it uses both of these values, really. The amplitude A is you take the Y max, okay, and you, let me get this right, because I don't want to mess it up. Um, you subtract the y minimum, okay, and then you divide it by 2. So what we do is do 27, take away 14, divide that by 2, and we get 6.5. And what that literally means is, is if you think about why that is, um, if you go to the graph, the highest point is at 27, the lowest point is at 14, and the amplitude is the distance from the middle to the top, right? So if we take those two numbers, subtract them, and divide that by 2, that tells us roughly from the middle to the top how, how, what that distance is. So what we've done is we've just... Okay, the, so here's our sign. Here's the bottom. Here's the top. Okay, we've just worked out that distance by subtracting them. 
and then we halved it because the amplitude is half that distance. And we know it's positive um, because, okay, if we go back to the data, we know it's positive because if we think about it, it starts, if we assume it starts here, then it goes up there, so it's positive. We can assume it's positive. Right, so A is 6.5, so we work that out. Right, D, we do this, we do a similar thing really. D is the middle value of these two, of the Y minimum and the Y maximum. So what we do is this, we take the Y maximum and we add the Y minimum to it and then we divide it by two. So we do 27, add 14 and half that. And what number do we get? We get 20.5, right? So that's the, that's the number at the end. And it literally is working out in the middle of those two numbers. That's the that's the number on the y-axis that's halfway between these two. All right, so we've got that. Okay, so we know that out of the equation already. Now what we need to do is work out the other two letters, the, the period and the shift that's taking place right now. The, let's work out the period first of all. Now the period's kind of obvious for this con this problem really. If we think about it, we're looking at temperature going from January to December. So if you think about summer and winter and autumn, you know, the temperature is going to be high in summer, then it's going to drop low into winter and then go back high into summer the following year, right? But the period is going to be 12 months, okay? And that's, you know, a year runs from January to December, then it repeats in 12 months. So we know what the period is going to be, the period is going to repeat itself every 12 months, okay? So we know that's 12, but if you think about how we work out the period, we work out the period by doing 2 pi divided by b, okay? But we know that's going to equal 12. So what we need to do is solve this little equation. We need to solve 12 equals 2 pi over b. Well, how do we solve that when b is on the bottom? If we swap those two around, remember you kind of, well, okay, let's do it the long way. Um, Multiply both sides by b to get b off the bottom. So it goes from here. So we get 25 equals 12b. So b, and then divide both sides by 12, we get 2 pi over 12. That's our answer. Well, let's simplify that. 2 pi over 12 equals pi over 6, because 2 12 simplifies to a sixth, right? So pi over 6 is our period. So we've got, so no, is, is our value for b, sorry, pi over 6, okay? Our period's 12, but pi over 6 is what b is. All right, let's work out the last thing. Let's work out the value of c. Now, this is the kind of the hard one to work. This is the difficult one to work out, really. I, I find it tricky to work out. If we go to our data, right, what we need to think about is the sine wave, first of all. The sine wave starts the at the principal axis and then it goes up and then below the principal axis and back. So it starts at the principal axis here, running through the middle here, okay? So, and remember it's, um, the sine wave repeats, so I will have the same thing this side as well. This is really badly drawn actually. Let me rub all this out. All right, so the sine wave repeats. It goes like this and then it repeats again and then you've got the principal axis running along the middle. Now what we have is this, to, to kind of visualize this, we've got a peak point here at the top. Now we know on our y axis that's 27, but um, in terms of our x axis, really, because we're looking at a shifting along the x axis, we've got a peak point here. Now let's go back to our data. Where's that highest point? The highest point is value of g, okay, and that was uh, in the month of July, so that's seven, right? So our, our highest point is is when when we're in the month of July, okay? So seven, right? And then when is it the coldest point? When is this? When is this bit of the bottom going to be? When is that? Okay, and if you look at it, G's are the highest. B was the lowest point. That's February, the second month. So that is going to be the second month. And if you think about it, really, um, we're going to, our graph has, it, it really should start here. It should start here. But it's shifted by this much. 
Okay, it's been shifted by this one. This is our actual value C. It's this value here. That's the shift of it. It should have started there, but it's 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 not. It, it's starting somewhere over here. So this is our shift value, which we're going to work out. And it's halfway between seven and two. So what we need to do is this: just add seven and two together, Oops. and half it. Okay, because that's. Hang on, not, not um, yeah. Um, add it. So we need we need that particular value here because that's where we wanted to start, right? So seven add two divided by two is four point five. That's our value for C. So it's shifted by that much. So, um, that's because if you think about, it, it, that's the point we want, right? Here's our here's our y axis. Okay, here's our y axis. And. Here's zero, right? But it, it, our sine wave doesn't start here at the origin like all the sine, well, like the sine wave should do. It's been moved along to this particular point. It's starting there now. But that point is halfway between the peak and this minimum point. It's halfway between the maximum and the minimum point on our x-axis. So it's halfway between 7 and 2, and halfway between 7 and 2 is 4.5. Okay, so what we have is we have all the components now to check and then we'll, to, to plot the graph and check it, so t equals, and what did we say our amplitude was? 6.5 sine bracket, and let's put a break back in here, pi over 6. Open bracket is going to be x take away, because we want to move our graph two places, well, 4.5 places to the right, because that's where it is now, so 4.5, take away 4.5, close bracket, and it's plus 20.5, is what got the displacement for. Now let's type it in and check that works. All right, so let's type it in here. Um, y equals, we have to do it in letters Y and X. So Y equals 6.5 sine open bracket. Now here's where it could get a little bit complicated. We need to do pi, just literally type in pi divided by six. Open another bracket, X take away 4.5. Okay, that's the hard bit done. Push all the way across with the arrow keys and put plus 20.5 at the end and press enter and there we go. Alright, so we have, it's pretty good actually, it's a function that kind of matches it quite well really. It goes through all the key points and you can see it's, um, let me close this, it's going through pretty much all of them. There's one or two that are slightly off, but it's going through the maximum and the minimum and all the other ones are close by. So we've made a function that models the temperature and then literally we can work out, we can put any value of x in now and work out what the temperature could be in the future, all right? So we model the function. So remember those key points really. Um, I think the hardest one is to work out is the, the shift, but the trick is to find on your x-axis where the lowest point and where the highest point is on your x-axis add them and halve it and that's what C is going to be, okay? And um, think about the context of the problem in terms of working out a period. We're looking at a year, so that's 12 months. Okay, so what you should do is, if you want to try the remaining questions on this, I might put some exam questions up later at the end of this sort of web page, uh, but if you want to look at some questions on this, go to page uh, 248 and it's exercise 10C in the second edition book, okay, in the second edition book. So have a go at that.